Okay, hi. Good afternoon. It is September 13th, uh, 2020, 20, 2022. This is our first Career Tuesday of the fall 2022 semester. And thank you all for joining us. And I especially want to welcome Nayati Patal, who is from GE Energy and Financial Services. So before I let you get started, Nayati, um, I'm not sure that I knew this, but I learned it today, is that you are a, you are a UConn graduate. And yes, I am. graduated with a degree in finance in 2015, went on to get a biomedical engineering degree, God bless you, the next year. <laughs> and you've been with GE uh, since 2015 with mm -hmm. GE Aviation and now GE Energy um, and Financial Services. So welcome. And uh, before we get started, um, for the students that are joining us, here's the way it's going to go. We are going to have Nayati um, speak for a few minutes, maybe 15 or give or take um, minutes. And I'm going to ask her some questions about GE Energy and Finance. And then um, she may have a couple of slides to share. At any point, if you wanna put um, a question in chat so that you don't forget it, be my guest. And um, if not at the end, if you wanna um, you know, open up your video and um, show us your face and join us that way, that's wonderful also. Um, so anyway, um, so Nayati, since GE is such a big global company, yeah. um, can you tell us a little bit about this area, GE Energy Financial Services? I know that you're based in Norwalk, which yeah. is wonderful. So tell us a little bit about what this particular group does that you work for. Sure. And here is where I'll attempt sharing my screen. Um, so let me share here and Judy, if you wouldn't mind letting me know if you can see my screen. Uh, yeah, we can see it, yes. Okay, great. Perfect. All right, um, all right. So GE Energy Financial Services, like Judy said, we're based headquartered out of Norwalk, Connecticut, but we do have um, satellite offices all over the world, um, including other locations in the United States, but including UK, Singapore, um, Dubai. So, so we're all over the place. Um, but maybe before getting into um, kind of the um, specifics of what EFS does, maybe just take a step back, like how Judy said, we're part of GE, the big general electric company. Um, and so I wanted to, to kind of give a little bit of GE today, there has been some changes, lots of changes over the past few years, and then explain where EFS, Energy Financial Services, kind of plays a role in that bigger GE. Um, so here on this screen, you can see a quote from our CEO, Larry Culp, um, kind of emphasizing the one of GE's key priorities, um, and that is an, playing an important role in the energy transition, um, and that is to combat climate change. Um, now, GE, a big technology company, where we play in all the various different energy um, ecosystems, that being renewables, aviation, grid, um, just regular power generation as well, so thermal power, um, with all of that, GE, um, this um, statistics actually surprised me, we play one third of the world's electricity generated, um, so it's all by GE power. Um, and so GE is focused on playing, you know, an essential role in helping our customers um, achieve the um, global energy transition through these this already um, large footprint of GE technology. Um, now, from kind of our product standpoint, we want to look at both, you know, lowering our emissions today. So that looks at aggressive carbon reductions, prioritizing grid modernization. Um, and promoting onshore and offshore wind technologies. But we also um, emphasize a lot around our R&D. Um, so that looks at things like carbon capture technologies um, and investing in renewables and, and zero carbon technologies. Now, like I mentioned, GE portfolio is pretty large. Um, what I'm sharing on screen here is, is the current four 
um, large G businesses, that being power, renewable energy, aviation, and healthcare. Now, power and renewable energy um, will spin off. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard the, the announcements over the past few months. GE is spinning off into three large um, publicly traded companies. One of them will be the energy focus. So power and renewable will become what's called GE Vernova. And EFS will go with, the, with this company, um, focusing on the thermal power plants and the renewable you know, hybrid um, offshore wind turbines and offshore wind turbines as well. And here on this page, you can see all the various different kind of sub businesses, sub technologies of what will be the GE Vernova portfolio business. And included in that, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, is EFS as well. So now, now that I've kind of explained where GE as a as a big company kind of plays, um, kind of getting into what does GE EFS, GE Energy Financial Services do in that glo um, larger global GE space. And so GE, a lot, I'm just laying out here a lot of the key kind of metrics and numbers. Um, but overall, what GE um, EFS does is it invests in global energy projects. Um, so that being both thermal and renewable energy projects. We provide financing solutions by leveraging our technical know-how, financing strength, and um, risk management skills to deploy um, about 40 billion in capital worldwide. And all of this is, you know, like I mentioned earlier on, the energy transition is of key importance to us. And so not only do we focus on deal structuring, but from to, to, to kind of um, get to that goal, we focus our teams a lot on driving strat strategy, policy, and underwriting for decarbonization strategies as well. So what I wanted to show on the next page here is like, I, like we've listed here, we play a big role in customizing deal structures. Um, just wanted to give an example here on a recent deal um, that GEFS played in. And so this here is Block Island. Um, the picture in the background is the actual offshore wind farm. Um, Block Island is a 30 megawatt offshore wind farm located off the shore of Rhode Island. <clears throat> and so this deal actually started back in 2015. Um, and you can see in the timeline there on the right hand side, pre 2016 is when project and development construction started. Then EFS is where we stepped in and said, okay, we are willing to provide some sort of capital support um, to get this project completed and operating. And so that's where you can see in 2016, EFS played roles in deal origination, underwriting, which is basically looking at what are what is the project pro forma going to look like? Um, how is it going to perform? And will it be, will the economics be profitable to, to all sponsors, to all investors? <clears throat> and so then 2016, um, we closed on this project successfully. And so in 2017 is when the project went into operation and GEEFS funded its, its con capital contribution into the project. The project um, has been operating for since 2017. Um, and so GE played a portfolio management role in, in those years, <clears throat> making sure that the project is operating as planned. And then in 2022, so the beginning of this year, is actually where EFS um, decided, okay, well, now's a, not a good time to sell off our stake into, in the project. And so we had a team that was put together to, to do just that. <clears throat> and so you can see in this, the structure on the left-hand side that there is a, a sponsor, a developer, who is also an investor into the project, along with what's called tax equity. And so tax equity is <clears throat> a specific type of investing tool it's not just straight up cash equity, but tax equity being someone who can um, utilize the tax credits that the US government offers for any wind turbine, wind plant, wind farm, um, both onshore and offshore projects. And so GE and very few others actually are um, in this market of participants who can actually utilize those tax credits. You need to have enough of a tax basis as a company to be able to utilize those tax credits. And so that's why you don't see as many players, um, investors in that space. 
And so that's how you can see that the sponsor here, it was Orsted, had come to us, GEFS, and um, Citibank as well, to, to be that tax equity provider to the project. And then here, I just wanted to list out, you know, as, as an analyst, you may wonder, okay, well, where in all this deal flow does an analyst sit? And it's really at every step that I listed out at the previous page, um, from origination to underwriting, the portfolio management to syndication. We rely heavily on the analysts and associates to own the financial model, perform due diligence, <clears throat> and really be that first um, person to, to identify any key risks, especially as they're going through and owning the model um, to, the, to the broader team. So I know I, I kind of spewed off a lot there, but um, maybe I'll pause there, see if there are any questions from the group. I think that that was so helpful to see, you know, I mean, the scope of the projects, I, I know this one was close by in Block Island, but when you and I spoke, many of your projects are just globally all over the world. Um, right. But the timeline is very long. Um, you yes. know, there's so many stakeholders, the timeline is very long. Mm -hmm. So I guess from a summer internship point of view and from knowing that these are students coming in that right. don't know the lingo yet, et cetera. <laughs> yes. um, like what are some skills that are important for them to come in so that they can then be indoctrinated and learn more about GE? Yeah, absolutely. And that fits pretty nicely into to my next page here. We kind of laid out what we expect, what we plan for our interns. Um, so the role that you know we're looking for is a summer analyst internship, um, and it's expected to be ten weeks. Um, and so right now we're we're looking for for folks to join for next summer, obviously, um, twenty twenty three. But for an intern, we look for uh, um, over the ten weeks um, a few different areas. So one is the projects we tend to because it is a shorter time frame we like to give um, assign various different projects one per um, intern usually depending on the scope um, so they can kind of own that within that 10 weeks um, and it can be you know ranging from anywhere from you know investing to capital markets to asset management but it's it's planned to be so that it's it's um, enough to to support during a 10 week, internship, um, not necessarily a longer deal cycle. Um, as you can see in the, from the previous pages, the longer deal cycle tends to be more than just the 10 week period. Um, but on top of just the projects themselves, we also do like to um, staff these interns on, on a deal, um, though they may not see it from end to end, at least they can you know, either shadow, see what a deal, typical deal model, deal calls may look like, um, and if possible, you know, help with some sort of analyses within the model as well. Um, and then, like you said, Judy, you know, not necessarily knowing the lingo and, and, and what we do, we absolutely emphasize training. So the first two weeks of the internship will be training focus. Um, there will be at least a couple hours every day of training sessions given from folks all over EFS, the experts per se, um, and so we we definitely don't expect the interns to know everything, but by the time the, they get through the training, you know, hopefully have absorbed at least a little bit of it. But yeah, hopefully that that answered that question. That's great. Um, we have a question from a student here. When it comes to the deal underwriting, um, is due diligence and assumptions made by analysts, or is the task done? by a third party for GE? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, so we we rely heavily on the experts um, and that's not necessarily the analysts themselves. So whether it's looking at things like the more technical engineering side, we have either in-house experts, technical ex experts, 
or we will hire third party um, experts, especially depending on location um, as well. So there's definitely, you know, it's even though I've written here that we support due diligence, um, it may be the support of, okay, well, we coordinate with the actual experts in whatever area that we, we are performing our due diligence in. Great. Um, um, okay. Um, I'm just going to ask another question. Anybody else raise your hand or in the chat, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, but I do know some of the people that are on the call, some of the students are thinking about summer internship 2023. So can you comment on what you're really looking for? Is it the resume? Is it the interview process? And what makes a student stand out to you? Right, absolutely. Maybe if I first focus on just the process itself. Um, so what I put here on the screen um, is what we're expecting as far as the schedule. Um, and it is, you know, dates are coming up relatively soon. Um, we have opened up the applications, both in Handshake is where I believe UConn is, is on. Um, and then, you know, we've, we've provided instructions within Handshake that we, we ask that everyone applies through the GE Careers website itself. Um, and so, you know, through the GE Careers website, the application due date is October 7th, so just under a month from now, I'd say. Um, and post, you know, after October 7th, we we close it all out. We'll go through res the resumes, everyone who's who's applied, um, and we tend to start the first round of interviews, phone interviews, um, starting the week of October 17th. Um, and then we'll have a, a panel interview kind of um, as a as a final round um, after that. So week of October 31st is, is the plan for now. Um, so what we ask is for now, you know, everyone who is interested to apply through the GE Careers website, um, I listed on the page here, you can search for the role itself. Um, if you wanna remember this um, number here, starting with R um, or, um, you know, just, just searching Summer Analyst 2023 internship, that could also work as well. There's a search function there. Um, but, um, you, I mean, I think the application is, is simple enough in that you, you supply your resume and then we'll go through the resume, um, all the resumes as we go through screening. But for resumes, I think what we will be looking for, not necessarily someone who's kind of a, just a finance major, um, we do accept applications from finance, engineering, people who are generally interested in the energy space as well. Um, we. I think the type of people that do well here are those that are more analytical, um, have experience in Excel, um, not necessarily expert level by any means, but you know can can somewhat navigate Excel so that when it comes to the modeling work, the analysis, um, it becomes much more easier to to do. Um, so yeah, as far as folks, students that that will be interested in, in interviewing will be those who kind of show that that bit of background, an analytical background, not necessarily just finance, engineering, um, uh, an interest in the energy space in general. Fantastic. Um, well, I have two questions in chat. Um, uh, one of them was, um, I believe, from one of our seniors in Stanford, and she was wondering, besides the summer internships, do you have openings for entry level roles for full time as mm -hmm. well? So for now, um, I think we just have the internship available. And the the reason I say that is because the way that at least the past couple of years that we've done analyst hiring is through the internship program itself. So those that go through the 10 week internship. Um, we use that as a 10 week long interview for a full time analyst position. Um, and so if there is, you know, interest in the full time analyst position, um, I would definitely recommend, you know, starting off with this internship and, um, and, and, you know, if you do well, then there will um, be likelihood of, of it flowing into a full time analyst position as well. Exactly. And that way it gives the student and the company a chance exactly. to kind of it goes both ways. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was somebody else who had a question here. Um, 
Um, yeah, I was hoping to ask a question, if that's all right. Excellent. Please do. Um, so you were talking about really shining during the internship process. How, um, say, one of us in this chat were to get that internship, how would we go about really impressing um, the people that we need to impress in order to land a full-time position afterwards? Yeah. Um, I think it's a combination of a few things. You know, one is during the training session, as an example, um, it's always surprising um, that not a lot of people ask questions during training sessions and those that do, those are the first ones that people always, you know, remember of, oh, wow, you know, that person had a lot of great questions. That's great. So it's from the very beginning of just being, um, you know, wanting and willing to learn. Um, and then as you get into the internship of doing um, work on your project and helping out with the deal team, if you are shadowing a deal team, just being proactive um, and, and not necessarily you know, being proactive and getting the work done, but even if you have questions, reaching out to to not just your direct manager, but other people around you, you know, when, when it comes time to getting um, the, the team together and deciding who we give offers to or who we don't, it comes from a lot of the input comes from the people um, that you've interacted with around you, not just your direct manager. Um, so I think, you know, the, the culture that we have here at EFS is definitely um, around, uh, centered around teams and, and teamwork. Um, so if you can, you know, demonstrate capabilities of, you know, not just the straight analytical, that's, that's just getting you through the door, but also being a team player, um, I think that'll be your, your recipe for success there. Great. Thank um, you so much. Yeah, Touch Nin, did you have a question also? It was in the chat. Do you want to ask your question? Yes, thank you. Uh, yes. When I look at the precise flow of the the process that we did have uh, the operational risk, but in the internship uh, uh, opportunity, I didn't see that uh, the operational risk uh, in terms of in terms it is av available for uh, the our student. Yeah. Um, I'm, I didn't hear the end for a master's degree student. Is that what you said? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And, and, okay. Risk management student. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I attend uh, FOM in uh, at uh, UConn uh, Stanford. So I interest on risk management internship. Okay, so I think uh, yeah. it's the question is about whether or not graduate students risk management project management, whether or not that's your profile as well. Mm -hmm. For right now, um, you know, we are looking at um, just a summer analyst position. Um, and so those tend to be filled with undergraduate. Um, if, if we do, you know, end up opening up to summer associate. Um, that would be where we would look at master's students. Um, so I know uh, um, not the greatest news for, for your question, but I think right now the focus will be on undergraduate students for the summer analyst position. Okay, fair enough. Um, somebody else asked, um, do the resumes need a cover letter when they apply? I don't think so. Um, I think the let your your resume um, do the speaking. I think um, our HR team tends to focus more on the uh, direct resume itself. Um, so um, I don't think the G Careers website requires a field for um, cover letters either. Okay. Um, Shi Jun Shin, do you want to ask your question? I see your hand raised. Uh, yeah. Hello. Uh yeah, I just want to ask because right now I am a uh, senior student in the, the University of Connecticut for my first semester, but I'm going to graduate in December. So I just want to ask that if there are any job or internship opportunities I can uh, to start research from like uh, right after I graduate. With with EFS, uh, unfortunately, no, I, our first um, 
internship will be this this summer 2023 uh, analyst internship. So nothing for we don't have anything available right now for um, January uh, between January and June of next year. Um, somebody else asked a question about how's the interns' performance measured and what does growth and career development look like? Mm -hmm. um, so I think some of it you answered on Timothy's question. Um, but anything that you can elaborate on regarding performance measurement and career development. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I think for from a performance standpoint, um, one thing that I you know, forgot to mention around what the overall internship entails is that not only do you go through your 10 weeks, but um, on that last week, you will have the opportunity to present your work, um, both your project and, and any other um, work that you may have done, say for the deal team work, to, and you'll, this presentation will be to our senior leadership team. So our CEO and her staff will be the audience for your presentation. And so this will be kind of your time to shine, um, your time to, to present the great work that you guys have done over the last, over the 10 week internship period. Um, as far as performance development, um, I mean, EFS, GE in general takes that very seriously. We, um, for full-time employees, we have, you know, internal, um, an internal, HR system um, where we are to meet with our, we call them people leaders, our managers um, on a regular basis to discuss um, how we are performing, um, how we're performing against the goals that we set at the beginning of, of the year. Um, for internship, obviously, with it being a much more consolidated time frame, um, we try and do kind of mimic a, a similar approach. Um, obviously, it wouldn't be through a system like how full time employees do it. But it would be with whoever your manager is to say, okay, well, at the beginning of your 10 week internship, here are the goals. What do you like plan to expect over that 10 week period? Um, and then kind of have in between touch points um, to to assess how you're doing, whether it's you know you're you're meeting the requirements, where you opportunities for improvement, um, and so on. So I think that from you know the the constant um, interactions that you'll have with your manager. Um, and even, you know, informal mentors that you can create within throughout the, the EFS team um, will also help in, in, um, in identifying either areas for improvement or, or where you're doing great and, and continue to do so. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. Um, Nayati, were you recruited on campus by GE when you started? Yes, yes, I was. I, um, same thing, went through. The, the GE or the career office. Um, we didn't have these um, career Tuesdays, I don't think, uh, back in that day, but it was more so going into the office, you know, seeing what's available and, and GE um, was recruiting um, at that time. And so I had my my interview on campus and, and I'd actually started with an internship, um, which then led to um, full time. Um, if anybody wants to follow up, are you okay to put your email into the chat bar, Niyati, yes. in case there's any questions mm -hmm. um, that arise afterwards? Sure, um, yeah, I'll do that afterwards, yep. Yeah. Um, anything else? Um, any other questions on video and chat? I love your slides. They're really fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, I had one more question. Um, yes. I was just wondering, I might have missed it, um, but is this a paid internship? Yes, this will be a paid internship. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time to do this today. This is great. Yeah, of course, no problem. And and if you guys, you know, come up with other questions afterwards, um, I will be at the career fair next Tuesday, I believe it is, um, in person. Um, so you can come find our booth, the, the GE Energy Financial Services booth. Um, come by, say hi, and let me know any other questions you have. That's great. Um, will you be able to put your email in the chat bar, Nayati? Maybe you did, and I'm not seeing it. But no, oh no, I haven't done that yet. Um, I'm trying to figure <laughs> um, out. I guess the only other thing I just want to to mention is that everybody understands there's been new legislation investing lots of lots of money into climate change, renewable energy, thermal power, wind. So I would have to think that will mean even more growth for your company in the future and more deals. Am I reading that one right? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, very much so. I think the last um, four weeks has been a whirlwind for us with the passing of the, the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, there has been many, many points around, like I mentioned before, tax credits. Um, that is a huge component of how us as GEFS plays into many of these deals. Um, and so with that being, you know, extended and, and enhanced now with the IRA, um, this is just more and more opportunities for, for GEFS to play a role in the space. That's fantastic. So good for the planet and good for our students and for GE. So everybody, Nayati is going to be at the career fair next week. Did you say Tuesday or Wednesday or both days? Uh, just Tuesday, the 20th. I think that's next Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So please stop by. Um, you know, uh, it's good to get this experience on virtual. It's even better to get it in person when um, GE is on campus. So, mm -hmm. um, one of the questions, will you be coming to the Stanford career fair as well? We have one coming up in October. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to do the um, the Stanford Career Fair. I think just with the the timing of things, we're looking to to get all our recruiting efforts done before our um, if you recall the October October seventh deadline that we have for That's our right. application yeah. processes. So, so good point. Thank you for bringing that up again. So please remember the deadline is October seventh. So that means if we can help in any way regarding resume or practice interview or however we can support you best, please reach out to the business career centers on your campus and please ensure that you have the application in uh, before the deadline, which is October 7th. Um, and um, thank you, Nayati, for joining us. And we're even more thrilled because you're a UConn alumni. So. <laughs> Thanks again, and all the students who joined us today. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Yes. So thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you for having us okay. today. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Right. Thank you. Thank bye -bye. you. Did you stop recording, Judy? Um, I think I did, but oh no, I have to press.